As the millennium turns in Wichita, Kansas, a growing sense of anxiety and paranoia surrounds Dr. Tiller and his clinic. And for very good reason, the anti-abortion group Operation Rescue embarks on a relentless campaign to shutter Dr. Tiller's clinic for good. Their approach was to wear him down and to, and to peck at him from every angle, from harassing him personally at his home to harassing the vendors or whoever else might be doing business with the, with the clinic. We released a list of people that we called collaborators, those that would collaborate with the abortion industry. If there was uh, any businesses that would have regular association with Mr. Tiller, we would list that. Our plumber, our electrician, people that hauled our trash. Wichita is a pretty big town. There's three cab companies. Two of them refused to bring patients from the airport to our clinic. FedEx said that they wouldn't deliver their packages to us anymore. And would it be OK if we just dropped them off some other place? And that wasn't FedEx as a policy. It was our driver. And the driver has the right, apparently, to say that they don't feel safe in a certain location. It's like we had become pariahs, and no one wanted to deal with us. And it isn't just the businesses in Wichita. It is also his employees who are targeted. Operation Rescue had um, a, a website just dedicated to, to all of us and all of our pictures and, and uh, names. And um, they knew more about us than we knew about ourselves. They started um, finding out where we all lived. So our neighbors got these barrage of postcards, some of them quite graphic, uh, outing us. Did you know that your neighbor, Shelley Sella, is an abortionist? Did you know your neighbor worked for Dr. Tiller? Do you know Kathy Revis is using blood money, you know, to pay for her house? Mostly it would just make me angry and certainly cemented my feelings about why I was working there. But no one is targeted as intensely or tenaciously as Dr. Tiller and his family. For them, real violence always looms. He purchased a, a bulletproof uh, Jeep and uh, wore a bulletproof vest. He had the federal marshals living with him for something like 30 months in his house. There's no way I can imagine what his family went through. That's impossible for me to comprehend that. I don't think they could ever wake up a day and feel secure in the knowledge that nothing was going to happen. In an effort to attract as much attention as possible to their campaign against Dr. Tiller, Operation Rescue soon set their sights beyond the Wichita city limits. One of Operation Rescue's uh, major goals was to make George Tiller's name, or at least his abortion facility and what he does, a household name. Well, finally, uh, Bill O'Reilly began picking up the story, and then, boy, he, he really uh, lit into Tiller. Tiller has killed thousands, thousands of late-term fetuses without explanation. He compared him to Nazis. He compared him to Stalin. He vilified Dr. Tiller on national TV 28 times. Tiller the baby killer. Tiller the baby killer, as some call him, will perform a late-term abortion for just about any reason. If you hear endlessly that someone is a killer, 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 he's certainly no longer a person, no longer a human being. That kind of behavior adds to the general attitude that it's okay to say hateful things about abortion providers. It's okay to act on that hate toward them. Beginning in 2006, Operation Rescue also files a steady stream of complaints about Dr. Tiller's practice. In June 2007, they have some success with this tactic. Dr. Tiller is charged with 19 misdemeanor counts connected to an alleged illegal relationship with a physician who had approved a number of late-term procedures. In Kansas, in order to do a post-viable abortion, you have to have a second Kansas physician who evaluates the patient and agrees that the pregnancy represents a threat to her health. And that physician could not be legally or financially tied to Dr. Tiller. Dr. Tiller was accused of having a financial relationship with her. 
In 2009, he stands trial in a Wichita courtroom. Operation Rescue is confident it is just a step away from accomplishing its mission, getting Dr. Tiller's medical license revoked. That's correct. The legislature was closing in and tightening the laws. The Kansas Board of Healing Arts had filed indictments. I think uh, it was clear that George Tiller was very close to retirement. His abortion clinic was closing very soon. On March 27, 2009, the jury in the case of the state of Kansas versus George Tiller leaves the courtroom to deliberate. They quickly return with a verdict. We, the jury, unanimously find the defendant not guilty of illegal abortion as alleged in count one. And um, he was acquitted, as somebody said, in less time than it takes to eat a ham sandwich. The jury came right back and said not guilty on all charges. It was a big load off of his uh, shoulders, oh yeah. I think for the anti-abortion people, it was a huge disappointment. We were so close to having Tiller lose his license. I wanted to beat him. Scott Roeder is not a member of Operation Rescue, but he attends the trial nearly every day. Here he's seen sitting beside Operation Rescue President Troy Newman. When the trial concludes, Roeder is devastated by the verdict. There's no question that Tiller's acquittal of those 19 charges was a part of what pushed Scott Roeder towards the actions that he took. No question. Did you decide that it was incumbent upon you to do something? There was nothing being done, and um, the legal process had been exhausted, and these babies were dying every day. So I felt that I needed to act, and quickly for those children. 